Am I the antagonist for not defending mother-in-law after she kept saying my daughter looks nothing like me? I'm not sure why my mother-in-law has suddenly changed towards me since I got pregnant. We used to get along great. She treated me like her own daughter, visited often, called me just to talk, and constantly told me she loves me. But after I became pregnant, something shifted. She stopped calling me, never reciprocated when I said I love you, and only came over to see my husband. Most of the time, she would try to convince him to leave the house with her. She barely acknowledges me when we pass each other, and she even tried to stay in the labor and delivery room despite being told no, claiming that her baby needs support. She would cling to my husband's arm and repeatedly try to get him to leave my side and join her on the couch. She was eventually asked to leave by the nurses. Since I had my daughter three months ago, she has visited around 10, 15 times, but has only held my child twice. Instead, she constantly follows my husband around and insists that he accompany her to do various tasks for her, like changing tires, fixing her computer, or helping around her house. None of that bothers me as much as her comments about how my daughter looks nothing like me, and everything like my husband and her. To provide some context, my husband looks nothing like his mother and strongly resembles his father. His mom is short, blonde, and has brown eyes, while he is tall, has black hair, and green eyes. They don't look related at all. Despite this, she insists that my daughter looks just like her and my husband, completely disregarding any resemblance to me. She has made these comments countless times, and I usually brush them off with a sarcastic comment. However, things escalated when I hosted a family dinner and invited her. She showed up with a scrapbook filled with photos of her and my husband from his birth to the present day. She began showing and telling everyone that my daughter basically doesn't look like me at all. My husband tried to interject a few times, asserting that our daughter does resemble me, but his mom ignored him. Finally, she approached my mom, who is a straightforward woman, and my mom said, Are you blind or are you just choosing to be ignorant? That girl looks just like my daughter and nothing like you. It's odd how you're desperately trying to push the idea that the baby looks like your son and you, even though your son doesn't resemble you either. No one said anything in response, but a few people chuckled. My husband remained silent, looking stunned. After that, my mother-in-law left. Later on, she sent a group text to my husband and me, expressing that she will never forgive us for not defending her against my mom's scene that supposedly embarrassed her in front of everyone. Personally, I don't feel guilty about it, but my husband does. Am I the asshole in this situation? Your mother-in-law. His behavior towards you has dramatically changed since you got pregnant, and it seems like she is prioritizing her relationship with your husband over her relationship with you and your daughter. Her comments about your daughter's appearance and her refusal to acknowledge your husband's input are disrespectful and hurtful. Your mother's response was justified in defending you and pointing out the hypocrisy in your mother-in-law's claims. You have no reason to feel bad for not defending her, as her actions and comments have been consistently dismissive and unsupportive of you as a mother. It may be worth discussing these issues with your husband and seeking couples therapy to address the strain this behavior is putting on your relationship. Your mother-in-law needs to understand and respect your role as the mother of your child and treat you with the same love and support she showed before your pregnancy. Am I the antagonist for not giving my mom's husband a role in my wedding? My mom married her husband when I was 16. I met him that same year and only lived in the same house as him for a little over a year before I moved out to go to college. I never saw him as a father figure or a stepdad, just as a nice guy. My brother never lived with him either. My brother got married in 2019, and my mom walked him down the aisle with her parents. Mom's husband was waiting for her in their seats. He wasn't included as a parent in the wedding because he wasn't one to my brother. This upset mom's husband, and I only learned about it a few months ago when I got engaged. They mentioned that mom's husband was hoping I would ask him or both of them to walk me down the aisle. However, I chose to ask my paternal granny instead. This decision was based on my closer relationship with my granny and the support she has given me throughout my life. When mom's husband brought this up, he expressed that it hurt to be publicly declared not a parent or parent figure when he has always considered us as his kids in some way. I suggested to him if a special dance with mom or walking down the aisle with mom would make him feel better, but he declined and expressed that he wanted to be publicly acknowledged as a father figure. I told him that he is not a father figure to me, and while I'm sorry he wants to be, that's not how I see him. I asked if there was something else he would like to do, and he mentioned walking me down the aisle or having a father-daughter dance. I explained that neither of those options were possible, but we could discuss an alternative. Over the past few months, both mom and her husband have brought up the idea again. With my wedding approaching, mom told me that I should have given him an actual role as a parent of the bride. She said it is breaking his heart to know he only gets to be her husband and not a fatherly figure. She even asked if they paid for the wedding, if I would reconsider but I declined. She inquired how much they would need to contribute for him to have the role of father of the bride, and again, I firmly said no amount. He then asked me why I didn't want him to fill that role when he's the only father figure I've ever known, since my dad passed away when I was two. 
When I explained my reasons, he accused me of being cruel and expressed how hurtful it was for both of us to reject him as a father figure. So, am I the asshole? You have the right to choose who plays significant roles in your wedding, and ultimately, it should be based on your own personal relationship with them. It's clear that you never saw your mom's husband as a father figure, and you have no obligation to give him that title simply because he wants it. You made the effort to include him in other ways, such as suggesting a special dance or finding another role for him. However, he rejected those suggestions because what he really wanted was to be publicly acknowledged as a father figure, which you are not comfortable with. It's important to prioritize your own feelings and wishes for your special day. Your mom is also in the wrong for trying to negotiate his role by asking how much they would have to contribute to the wedding. This implies that his participation is conditional upon their financial contribution, which is not fair to you or your partner. Overall, it's essential to respect your own feelings and boundaries when it comes to your wedding day. Your mom's husband needs to understand and accept your decision, even if it hurts his feelings. Am I the antagonist for not inviting my sister-in-law's in-laws to my kid's birthday party? So my child was born on the 31st of December, seven years ago. Every year we have a family lunch at our house to celebrate, but since my family lives in a different country, it's just my husband's family that joins us. My sister-in-law got married three months ago and had a celebration lunch two weeks later. During that lunch, we met her new in-laws, but we didn't really connect or have a meaningful conversation. They were practically strangers to us, and they didn't interact with my child at all. Now it's my child's birthday, and my sister-in-law tells me that her in-laws will be in town, so they would like to join us for the birthday lunch. I wasn't comfortable with having strangers in the house on such a special day, and my child didn't want them there either. So I told my sister-in-law that she and her husband are welcome to come, but her in-laws should find something else to do for three hours. Here's what my sister-in-law decided to do. She came to our house, brought her son, and left him here for the day to spend time and play with my child. Then she told her mom and her brother, not my husband, to meet her, her husband, and her in-laws for a morning coffee. The morning coffee turned into lunch, and they ended up not showing up for my child's birthday. By around 5 p.m., I was fed up with babysitting her child, so I asked my husband to call her and tell her to pick him up. She came alone and noticed that we hadn't cut the cake yet, so she insisted that we do it together. But my child wanted to save it for later, to have a special moment with just me and their dad. However, my sister-in-law persisted, so we reluctantly sang happy birthday and cut the cake. They had a slice and then left. I even gave them a piece of cake to take with them for her in-laws. Feeling like we needed to salvage the day at least a little bit, my husband and I decided to take our child bowling, their first time. While we were in the car, my brother-in-law messaged me saying that he was tired and went to bed, but now wants to come over and give a gift to my child. I told him we weren't home. Then, my mother-in-law called my husband. It was around 7 p.m. by then, saying she wanted to drop by and give him a sweet she had prepared. I became angry and told my husband that nobody was welcome anymore. We decided to go home, rest, and be awake for the New Year's fireworks. So in summary, because I didn't invite my sister-in-law's in-laws to my child's birthday party, nobody showed up. To top it off, I've been called an insensitive person for making my sister-in-law choose between her in-laws and my child. Some even suggested that we should have celebrated the birthday on a different day instead. So, who's the insensitive one here? Also, for the past four days, my sister-in-law has been persistently asking to meet up, even though she never wanted to before. I politely decline because I'm not ready to see her yet. Should I just let this small incident go and move on? On one hand, it is understandable that you did not want strangers, who happened to be the in-laws of your sister-in-law, to attend your child's birthday party. Your child didn't want them around and you wanted to celebrate the day in a way that made your child happy. It is also reasonable to want to spend quality time with your child on their birthday without the presence of strangers. You communicated your feelings to your sister-in-law and set boundaries, which is important in maintaining a healthy family dynamic. On the other hand, it seems your sister-in-law may have misunderstood your boundaries and made alternative plans, leaving your child feeling ignored on their special day. While her intentions may not have been malicious, her decision to leave her child with you and change the plans without your consent may have been inconsiderate. It is understandable that you felt frustrated and upset about the situation. In terms of who is in the wrong, it is subjective and there is no definitive answer. Both parties could have communicated more clearly and considered each other's feelings. It is important for family members to respect boundaries and be understanding of each other's needs. As for your sister-in-law wanting to meet with you, it may be beneficial to eventually have a conversation to discuss the events that occurred and express your feelings. It is up to you to decide when you are ready to meet and if the issue is something that can be resolved through open communication and understanding. Am I the antagonist for telling my parents they repulse me and informing their friends the reason after learning they had harassed my late wife to write letters to our kids before she died? I am a 28-year-old man who was married to Amy for six years, and we have three children together. Our sons are now 10 and 8, and our daughter is 6. Amy passed away from cancer two years ago after being sick for a little over a year, 
with a terminal diagnosis for eight months. I helped care for Amy at home with the support of her family, including her mom, four siblings, and grandparents, before she passed away peacefully. However, recently, Amy's twin sister Ivy discovered that my parents had caused some problems for Amy toward the end of her life. According to Amy's diary, my parents had asked her to write letters to our kids, urging them to accept and embrace another mom someday. They wanted the kids to promise to keep their hearts and minds open and not just treat my future wife as a stepmother, but as a mom. They also wanted Amy to tell the kids to ask me to find a new mom within a few months of her death, as if it was her dying wish. Amy disagreed with their requests and didn't include those words in the letters or videos she prepared for the kids. My parents relentlessly pressed her on this issue whenever they were alone with her, causing her great distress. When I read Amy's diary, I was furious. To make matters worse, my parents have been pressuring me to start dating again and consider remarrying, claiming it's what Amy would have wanted for me. They even suggested that my kids would grow up without a mother, which I strongly disagreed with since Amy died when they were so young. I confronted my parents via text, telling them that I knew what they had done and to stay away from me and the kids. They responded by denying any wrongdoing and expressing no remorse for their actions, insisting that they were simply trying to improve our lives. This pushed me over the edge, and I drove to their house to tell them face to face how disgusted I was with their behavior. Unfortunately, I didn't realize they had friends over at the time, so I ended up telling them as well, before leaving. Later, my parents tried to defend themselves through text messages, claiming that I should be upset with Amy, not them. When I ignored them, they criticized me for publicly humiliating them in front of their friends. My siblings also took their side, telling me I shouldn't have confronted our parents and that they were only looking out for me. However, when I asked them if our parents would have treated me the same way if I were in Amy's position, they couldn't deny that our parents wouldn't have. So am I the asshole? You are absolutely not the asshole in this situation. Your parents crossed a major boundary by harassing your late wife during her final months and pressuring her to make inappropriate requests in her letters to your children. Their actions were disrespectful and caused unnecessary distress to your wife during an already difficult time. It is completely understandable that you were furious after discovering what they had done. You had every right to confront them and express your disgust. It is important for you to protect yourself and your children from any further emotional harm that your parents may cause. Your parents' attempts to defend themselves and shift the blame onto your late wife only further highlight their lack of remorse and consideration for your feelings. Their friends finding out about their actions was a consequence of their own actions, not your fault. Your siblings' defense of your parents is misguided. Harassing someone during their final moments is not putting someone's needs first. It is selfish and cruel. Their inability to recognize the double standards and how your parents would have treated you in the same situation is concerning. Overall, you are justified in cutting off contact with your parents for the sake of your own emotional well-being and that of your children. Surround yourself with a support system that respects and understands your feelings in this difficult time.